Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Hi there, my name's Timmy Joe, making videos about computers on the internet for you, little Billy. You gotta do this one for me, Billy. McGarnagal. Okay. For you, McGarnagal. Yeah, that's all. I'm talking to you, Billy. Billy is dead! Hi there. So, it's a review of a motherboard. The best motherboard I've ever found for Ryzen. You'd be interested to listen because, you know, maybe you want the best performance out of your Ryzen chip. And I'm here to tell you because I've played with a lot of freaking Ryzen motherboards. That is for sure. So, why, why are we talking about this one today? Well, I wanted to pick up, like, the best possible AM4 board that they're, you know, releasing. I know they'll probably release a different chipset when they do release better, uh, you know, Ryzen CPUs and Ryzen Plus and Ryzen 2. But uh, if they're supposed to support it, why not pick up one of the better ones right now? Hold on to it for a long time. And it's took, taken a while to find the right combo, the right, you know, the best situation. Because, you know, it's it's finicky. And you got to do your research. And a lot of, you know, BIOS updates over the last nine months and stuff like that have pushed things one way or another. And Gigabyte, hell, I even had the same motherboard for Threadripper. And it did a freaking amazing job. And when I, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbled for, for Threadripper, and it worked out so well, I figured, hey, why not get the X370 version of this uh, motherboard? So, what would I recommend in the cheap? Because this is not a cheap motherboard, and we'll get to the pricing and stuff like that on this in, you know, a second. But, well, this. This is what I was using for quite some time, actually, in uh, a micro ATX build. The Azrock AB350M Pro 4. And it's bigger brother, the full ATX version, the non-M version. Uh, I used it in this PC, you know, and stuff and things, and uh, I really liked it. I actually stuck uh, with this one over a few other motherboards simply because memory support is so important. And uh, this was very good for, what, the 70, 80 bucks, uh, 90 bucks that this thing ends up being uh, for supporting that high-end, high-speed memory. Okay, that's what makes Ryzen fast because the Ryzen gets to 3.9 gigahertz, sometimes 4 gigahertz, and grinds to a halt in the CPU department. And all you can do is get a proper motherboard to overclock some memory to make it faster. And that board was capable of doing that in most situations. But I'm happy to say that this uh, Gigabyte AX370 Gaming K7 is even better at overclocking memory. I have uh, four DIMMs, 32 gigs of uh, Ballistics Elite 3200 megahertz memory in here that I have not been able to get working properly on any Ryzen motherboard. Now I've tested MSI Gaming, uh, AB, uh, sorry, uh, ASRock, uh, the little board there, the tight one of the I don't know Fatality boards. Uh, I've tested Asus Prime. I've tested uh, a lot of other boards over the cheapest a uh, X370 Gigabyte, which was total crap. Don't buy cheap when you're going with with gigabyte uh, i tested a lot of other boards is what i'm getting at and i was never able to get this particular memory to run at its rated speed it's not samsung b die we'll say that and this motherboard does it and it does it well just load the xmp profile and it will run at 3200 megahertz no problems no crashes very very well uh unfortunately my chip is just kind of Fry, well, it's not fried, but I lost a silicon lottery, and in the beginning, I was able to hit four gigahertz a little bit easier. This thing's tired itself out, and uh, 3.9, 3.95 gigahertz is about my fastest overclock on this Ryzen chip. I was even in the garage yesterday uh, at minus 30 doing the outside overclocking thing, and I was not successful in overclocking this beyond 3.9 uh, gigahertz. I don't know what it is, but this should theoretically be one of the better motherboards to overclock with it has a six plus four phase vrm which isn't the best there are better out there but what makes this thing so good is the clock gen it has it has a really advanced clock gen which i could get into specifics on how that works but i don't know how it works i just know that it does 
uh, basically makes it so you can alter the CPU speed like in the you know megahertz like by by the megahertz like it's uh, a setting in the motherboard that allows you to change things on a very like low end level uh, stuff I don't really care too too much about but uh, in doing so it allows for memory to overclock very well and for you to basically you know have a lot of options when it comes to fine tuning things in the BIOS you see here the BIOS very nice uh, it's the AORUS BIOS it's the same BIOS you'll see on high end Intel parts as well as the Threadripper motherboard had the same style BIOS. It has things like load line calibration in it. It has voltages for every single setting. You know, it has their Smart Fan 5 thing. You can even control the RGB of the motherboard in the BIOS, which I think is awesome. It makes it so you don't have to download the Windows software just to, you know, make the motherboard green if you want it to be because uh, that software often gets pretty lame so it has uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten usb ports one of them being type c one of them being uh, regular usb 3.1 it has uh some really good audio on it uh some you know external caps and stuff uh that make the uh, you know it's a sound blaster quality level of uh you know onboard audio it has uh some nice lights all over it it has uh you know eight fan hookups uh you know with pump support uh, a couple downsides though it only has one nvme slot and one m.2 slot in total when even this board has two m.2 slots only one of them being for nvme drives but you know you have a little sata stick you can't plug it in here and an nvme but you know that's not a big deal it has two lan ports like gigabit lan ethernet ports but no wi-fi which kind of sucks because, uh, you know, it's nice on this high end of a motherboard to have Wi-Fi just so you don't have to plug it in if you're, you know, going to some remote corner of your house or bringing it to a LAN party. But most people will plug it in anyways. Uh, but, yeah, it has all the bells and whistles, and I really like the BIOS. And it even has two BIOSes. So if you happen to screw one of your BIOSes up, flip a switch on the motherboard and, you know, go into another BIOS and away you go. You pick up where you left off. And uh, it has uh, buttons on the motherboard for power reset, reset BIOS. Uh, so you don't have to have case buttons if you have this on an open air situation, which is very, very nice. It also has a readout showing you post codes uh, down here at the bottom, um, you know, comes in handy. And, uh, you know, it has lots of stickers and stuff in the box. And, uh, you know, it has uh, stickers and an SLI bridge and, uh, you know, different things and stuff. So all in all, it's just uh, for, for $200 is what it costs. Here, I'll show you. It's uh, the best all around board, I think. And I, I think, you know, you can never go wrong going Asus, but in this $200 and plus category is right at the bottom of that. And it has everything and very, very good memory support. And I think maybe some of the Asus boards might be better, but they're, they're typically very expensive for $201.99 on Amazon links below. If you want to buy it, affiliate link always helps me out. Remember that if you're buying anything on Amazon, go to Timmy Joe's videos and click on Amazon link and buy from there. It always helps me out. But uh, yeah, this would be the motherboard I recommend if you have the money to spend. And if you're an El Cheapo, you can't go wrong going ASRock, uh, especially this uh, Pro 4 series, because it's sub $100 and there are several different options for the size of motherboard. And it just has like no, you know, downfalls. But this would be my favorite high-end one, and I'm glad I bought it, and I'll be sticking with it for a while. So if you have any questions about it, there is always comments below. I know this wasn't exactly the most heavy of reviews or overviews, but uh, what I like to do is give my opinion on uh, my feeling of using it, and I've been using it for about a month and a half now, and I couldn't be happier with it. And the memory supports there. I tested uh, every m m piece of memory I have, and it always ran at the rated speed or above. You could even overclock some sticks. Like I had a Ryzen branded kit that it would go 3200, even though it was a 3000 uh, rated on this board, which was very, very nice. Before I sent that out, I checked that out. Uh, so memory support being very important. This will be your board at $200 because uh, it's just, it, it's miles better than some of the other boards I've checked where that it wouldn't even post or you'd get a lot of beeping or just a long post before it would even register the memory. And uh, this thing, it's just boots up boop, every time. 
I'll see you guys in another video. This is my 2017 best rise and motherboard and uh yeah i hope you guys have a wonderful new year i'll probably see you before the end of the new year because i'm pumping them videos out for y'all and i'll see you guys later Woo!